Welcome to a new video in my home automation series and uh, today I'm going to talk about iHost again mainly because uh, we got a new version 2.3.0 well 2.3.4 uh, is the current version and uh, there has been some interesting changes in this uh, new version and namely there were two main changes one is that the backup and restore functionality was made available and I think this is something that uh, many people has requested in uh, especially I've seen so many references to this in the forum um, and I think it's a great feature and uh, of course if you are using this a lot then uh, issues with upgrades and just going back to previous versions was probably a you know a big thing also you know once you have so many scenes there is no really other way to back them up and then to restore them later unless you just want to create them all manually again so yeah yeah it is it is a big thing and the other thing which I am a little bit less excited about is the uh, the new MetaHub feature. And the only reason I'm just not too excited about this because it is beta at the moment. So it has some supports for some limited devices, but most of the stuff is coming on later. So, so I think this is not as much as a new feature, but more like a direction where uh, Sonoff is going with the iHost. Although if I have to be really honest, uh, I think most of us who use home automation probably have some sort of smart speaker, a speaker either from Apple or Amazon or Google at our house. And if you have one of these products and probably you have a fairly recent product, like only a couple of years old, then you most probably already have a Matter Hub or, the, or a border router. So if you have that, then this functionality is not really essential because, well, as I said, you already have the Matter Hub, uh, and then you might just use the uh, Matter Breach functionality, which was already included in the uh, in the iHost for some time, which allows you to sync the iHost devices over Matter to another system. For example, Apple, you know, Google, or Amazon. And this is why I think that maybe the subset of people who are going to use iHost for a Matter Hub is going to be somewhat smaller. I mean, this might still apply you if, uh, especially like, you know, when I started with Google Home, I mean, Google wasn't available uh, in the country where I live. I mean, nowadays I can just buy it, but it wasn't in the beginning. So uh, if I would be still in the same situation, then uh, yeah, the, it would be great that the iHost can now be a Matter Hub as well. And I can just buy just simple Matter enabled devices and complement the existing Sonoff product range with some additional devices from different vendors. And as I said in the beginning, all these came in uh, iCube or EV-Link version 2.3.0 and now we are 2.3.4 uh, already and I noticed that uh, you know the subversion 1, 2 and 3 came fairly quickly so probably there were some issues I mean we can check that uh, the you know the change log but uh, so there were a couple of uh, you know smaller bugs that they needed to fix in uh, uh, from the you know from the main feature release of 2.3.0 where you know NATO noticed as you can see all the uh, smaller versions are just bug fixes of various smaller issues so yeah just make sure that you have you are on the latest version and uh, you don't see these issues anymore but now let's go back to the backup feature and for that let me change the view so in order to access this backup feature we have to go into the settings and you would notice that there is a new option here which says backup and restore and by the way there is like a help that you can also read what the backup does and we are going to go through those uh, screens anyway when i go through the backup i'm very happy that when this backup and restore feature got uh, introduced it was introdu introduced as a fairly comprehensive set of features because it as you can see from the screen, it pretty much backups everything which is on the iHost. So you can back up the, the devices, so like the Wi-Fi or the Zigbee devices that you have, or your smart scenes, the security settings, the cast configurations, all your Docker images are included, the Matter Hub configuration, and you know other general settings. So pretty much everything. So if you create a backup, and then if you want to restore, everything is restored you don't have to do anything else or the configuration is going to be there so i do like the fact that it is comprehensive so the only thing which is missing is that the backup does not include anything about the firmware so it's not going to as you can see here it's not uh, you won't be able to use this to roll back to a previous version of the firmware so uh the backup works on top of your firmware so basically it just backs up everything that uh you have configured on the device 
but obviously you know above the firmware and it is nice that the uh, dockers are also included because I mean, yeah, you can spend a lot of time configuring your Docker images, setting them up, you know, conf um, you know, starting them, installing, and now you can just easily back up and restore them. More not to mention all the scenes and the Zigbee devices. I mean, to be honest, I think, especially in the beginning of the uh, iHost, we have seen a couple of updates, but I think that was also applicable for an S Pen or Pro, where a major update would... Um, basically just uh, restart your ZigBee coordinator, which means that all your ZigBee devices would be lost and you have to just uh, pair them again. Uh, but now with the backup functionality, that's also backed up. So your ZigBee devices, you know, when you do the restore are going to be available. You don't have to repair them. So as you see in the next couple of minutes, I have gone through this functionality. So I'm going to show you how the backup and the restore works. Uh, the one thing I haven't tested is uh, how this works like across devices uh, because obviously one reason you want to back up because if you make those changes and some for some reason those changes are not useful or you made a huge amount of changes and it would be really difficult to go back to let's say a previously known good version you can just uh, restore it from a previous backup but it would be also useful that uh, if your iHost dies for whatever reason you know configuring a brand new iHost with the same functionality would be very time consuming and the backups are st saved into the micro SD, uh, SD card so ideally you can just remove the micro SD card get a new iHost plug this in and then you know uh, restore it from those backup so that's something I haven't tested I'm not sure how it would behave whether you can just uh, you know back up from an old device like you don't know, keep a backup of your current fresh system and let's say your iHost dies or the Zigbee or something happens and it just fails you can just swap it out with a new iHost and then put in the SD card and restore it I would think that this process works as well but I don't have two devices to test with okay so let's go back to the iHost and go through these options I mean it's really it's about like two buttons and then you have to go through a wizard so you can create backups and um, we have already discussed that it's going to back up all your you know stuff on the iHost and you have four backup slots so one slot is reserved for menu uh, automated backup and then uh, th you have three other slots that you can you know create for manual backups please also be aware that during the backup the system would be frozen so if you especially if you want to do an automated backup let's say you know like three o'clock every sunday or saturday or daily or whatever frequency that if you uh, you know plan to have any smart scenes that are running in that period so maybe you have run, smart scenes that are scheduled based on time or obviously some smart scenes that are uh, configured based on you know some devices doing something they might not work or work with a long delay uh, during this uh, backup period so I mean obviously do it in a period where nothing else is running or nothing else is supposed to run and you are probably sleeping so you won't notice like you know lights not turning on or something like that okay and then you go through this and then you have two options you can create an automated backup so i have created an automated backup just for testing to run every single day at 4 a.m as you can see you can configure which days of the week or you can do like you know custom so every day or custom or you know just once um i mean to be honest i don't think that uh, automated backups have much relevance well, especially not daily ones, I don't think that you would be making so many changes. Maybe it's just a better idea just to, you know, keep manual backups when you are making some major changes to the system. You know, you are creating a bunch of new scenes or adding new, uh, a lot of Zigbee devices. And then you just confirm and then your automated backups will be enabled or disabled. Or you can just disable it from here and then confirm. So then the automated backups are not created anymore. Or you can go back and create the manual backups and that's just you know you just give it a name and you can uh, you know give it a password and that password uh, you will need to provide once you are back uh, restoring that backup and then you just click confirm and as the uh, warning suggested it takes a couple of minutes for this backup to fully complete and during that time your system is not going to be responsive and of course make sure that you don't power off the system during that uh, backup process and also 
not uh, don't power it off during the restore process. Okay, and then there is the restore functionality, which is yeah, you can restore from any of your backup. And again, there is a warning or notification that the uh, the restore process will not affect your firmware, so the device will stay on the firmware that it is on at the moment. So you click next. And yeah, make sure that your TF card is inserted and you don't power off or reboot the device. And also there is some notification that you may have to do some additional activity once you, uh, once you restore the device. And there is a note here to also factor reset, reset the old iHost after it has been restored. So it, uh, you know, obviously just to make sure that it doesn't create another ZigBee network, which was uh, used previously and starts looking for devices that it was configured. So that sort of suggests that you can do that process that I mentioned before that you are taking a backup on an iHost and then you are migrating that configuration into a new iHost, let's say, because of the old iHost died. I mean, of course, in that case, you don't have to worry about the factory reset if the old one is dead anyway. And then you go to the next screen. And uh, I just had to wait for a couple of seconds, but I had two slots that I have created. So that was the automatic slot. So that's the one that uh, uh, triggered at 4 a.m. today and that created a file. And then there is also a manual uh, version. So you can see that it says 2.30 fresh. So that's uh, the backup that I've taken after I upgraded to version 2.3. And all you need to do is click on restore, which again is going to take a couple of minutes to complete. And just in case the four backup slots are not uh, enough for you, you can download these backups and then you can also restore uh, from a local file. So you can do that as well. Um, I mean, obviously the uh, SD card where the backups are stored are also used by the Docker images. So I have a couple of images. Again, I have a fairly uh, large uh, SD card inser in inserted. So based on these file size, I don't think that the SD card would be running out of space. If it does, then of course uh, the backup would fail. And there was also a message uh, notification saying that if there if there is no enough space on the um, on the SD card, then the oldest backup is going to get deleted. So if you have something which is you know you definitely want to keep, make sure that you come here after the uh, after the backup was taken, and then you know hit download so you can find so you can save that file locally as well, so you can reuse them later. So. I mean, that's it. It's a nice functionality. I mean, it's a very straightforward one. You don't have to do a lot of things. It's easy to back up. It's easy to set up an automated backup and it's also easy to do a restore. So yeah, and you know, I'm a fan of simple functions that is going to make your life easy. And you might not think that it's going to make your life easy or you are going to use it a lot. But again, you know, if for any reason your iHost uh, dies and just think about how much time it would take to set up all your devices, all your Docker images, add all your Zigbee devices back. Not to mention that you have to find all the Zigbee devices and reset them. Um, and now you can just easily do with a backup and restore. So it's definitely useful. So let's move on to over, over to the next one. So I've already said a couple of things about that in the intro of the video. So it is definitely a, uh, well, it doesn't really uh, you know say here, but they, it is definitely a beta functionality and you can see what is supported at the moment. So uh, the only thing which, well, it's really the, you know, the on off um, plug units, like, you know, these uh, um, controllable sockets, that those are the ones that are uh, supported at the moment. And of course they have planning for, you know, lights and light switches. I mean, I'm to be honest, I'm not really sure why there is an X here for the light switch because uh, my understanding was that, you know, whether you have a light switch, which is switching on a light with a switch as a plug, it's basically just doing the same switching. It's just a different, you know, physical layout and a design, but it, it does the same function. It has the same controls. It has the same functions. So I'm not really sure why that is not working. Also not to mention that there are so many other things that are coming on, are coming out with matter with support for, you know, motion sensors, blinds, 
that are quite popular in matter so they are not on this uh, roadmap yet so again it's a beta functionality it is coming you can start using it but probably it's going to take some time until it catches up with the latest devices that are available and you know well available for purchase in matter as well and these are only for wi-fi stuff so you can see the the thread here is unverified at the moment so yeah this functionality is there but if you already have like a google apple or amazon device which supports matter or you know any other third party matter hub i probably would use that for the time being until this functionality gets you know fully supported with all the uh, different devices that are available at the moment and just for the sake of completeness uh, this article also mentions that with this 2.0 uh, 2.3.0 firmware the uh, zigbee 2 cube functionality exits beta and i've already used it and i've had many generic uh, zigbee device with ihost and they all seem to work so i can definitely say that this functionality is working and you can use you know non son of devices with ihost without any issues and also you know they um, uh, included support for some of the newer devices like the r5 and the s mate which uh, and some ikea um, products as well which also became part of this uh, 2.3.0 firmware release and this pretty much concludes my update on the latest firmware version for the son of ihost if you don't have a son of iHost and if we want to buy one, you will find affiliated links in the video description. But I think that will be all for today. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you next video.